Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. This is your host, the Honey Badger, giving it to you straight in the RV business as usual. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to this on Spotify, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcast at, welcome. And thank you for your support. I'm going to go over some of the news in the RV world that's happened over the last two weeks. I'm a little bit behind, but I want to make sure I gathered all the information for you guys to make sure it was solid and accurate. There's a lot of things going around, a lot of rumors. Uh, There's stuff I'm going to put to bed real quick. And then I got some, let's just say some interesting things I think you're going to want to hear So make sure you stick around. I mean, obviously, if you're downloading this, watch it, you know, listen to it as you go along in the day. So first of all, if you don't already know, I went full time in a fifth wheel with my family. So we bought a bunkhouse fifth wheel, a Cougar. It's got an Arctic package. So it has the tank heaters, the extra insulation, the bigger furnace. All the bells and whistles you can think of for, let's call it, winter camping. But I want, and this is not a knock on Keystone. This is not a knock on any manufacturer in at all. This is just a fact of life. There's only so much insulation you can put in a coach, <coughs> pardon me, in a two-inch thick sidewall. That's what you get. Two inches. And there's just only so much you can put in there. So what I've done is I winterized the unit. So when we first got here, first of all, Chiloquin, Oregon. That's where I'm living. Okay, So Chiloquin, Oregon is known to get between three and five feet of snow a year. Well, when I got here Thanksgiving week, they already had a foot and a half, which is unusual for this area. So I figured, you know what, we're going to go old school. So I got uh, OSB and Pink Panther insulation, R5, and I skirted the entire underbelly of the fifth wheel. And I even skirted around the slide outs. Because you know there's really no insulation in slide outs. No matter what a a manufacturer says, there's not very much insulation in a slide out. Okay. Well, that was about two weeks ago. Now what's going on? is we hit single digits for the first time in a long time in Oregon, this part of Oregon. So we woke up in the morning, we noticed the furnace was running every four or five minutes, and we only have it set to 65, but it was running the majority of the night. And I look around, and if you feel the windows all over, and they're thermal pane windows, they're not dual pane windows, they're thermal pane. That's what the Arctic package has with Keystone Cougar when you buy their luxury package. They are cold as ice. So what I did was I filmed myself, just like I'm doing all the time with anything I do with this fifth wheel. I filmed myself putting cardboard boxes, you know, cut up cardboard boxes and the scrap insulation I had and taping it to all the windows except for one, and that's the kitchen window because the kitchen window is above the stove. Now, everybody's going to laugh at me. I mean, on TikTok alone, I get people that talk crap all day. But hey, you know what? The haters hate, and the people that don't, I welcome it all. Doesn't matter. So my point is, is where I'm going with this, is when you go buy a coach, no matter what you buy, if you're planning on camping in anything under 30 degrees, 
you need to do something to keep the trailer or the motorhome or the fifth wheel, whatever you may own, to keep it warm, to keep it insulated, to keep it sealed. One of the major things that you can do, especially if you're prepping next year, let's say you're spring, summer next year, you're camping in the summer, you said, you know what, I'm going to do some winter camping. I'm going to go up to Tahoe, I'm going to go to, you know, Mammoth, if you live on the West Coast. Maybe you're going to go to Montana, you're going to go to Billings or Missoula, Montana. Seal your windows. Put silicone, clear silicone around those windows and get them sealed nice and tight. And I know it looks ugly, guys, but get extra insulation to put around your windows, especially if you're going to be at a spot for two weeks, three weeks, long term. We're going to be here for probably a year. So you just have to prepare for these things. Because otherwise, you're just going to burn through propane. Now, we have three electric heaters in this fifth wheel. We have two space heaters for the bedrooms. And then, of course, we have the fireplace, which has the big, it's the big fireplace, the big electric heater. And all those do is just kind of keep, the, keep, keep it a little toasty in, in, in spaces. So, like, we had two five-gallon propane tanks. In between cooking, the furnace, and hot water heater, it lasted us three weeks. Three weeks. Now, we're not at 80 degrees in the fifth wheel. We're more like between 65 and 70. But if you compare that to what the temperature is outside, like tonight, night of recording, and it's 10 o'clock right now, it's nine degrees outside. It's supposed to dip down to three. So to be in the mid 60s to low 70s inside the fifth wheel means we did something right. No matter how ugly it may look, no matter that I know that the OSB is going to fall apart by the time I get to March, but that's okay. So be prepared, guys. Don't, don't sit and... Here's something I'm trying to maybe try to get across to you. And I've gotten so much more tactful as I've gotten older. I would have just told you straight out years ago. But there is no such thing as a real Four Seasons coach. I don't care who says it. I don't care if it's Arctic Fox. I don't care if it's Riverstone by Forest River. I don't care if it's Montana Big Sky. I don't care if it's a Tiffin Phaeton. There is no such thing as a true, real Four Seasons coach. It doesn't exist. There are things that you need to do, both in the winter and the summer, to keep your insulation factors good, to keep it up. To make yourself comfortable, especially if you're going full-time. My family and I, we're doing it full-time. We're going to do it for a year, maybe two. My wife told me the other day, hey, we got a fifth wheel now. We can pretty much go wherever we decide we want to go. If we want to live in Idaho, if we want to live in Vegas again, we have the freedom. And, and there was something else that, that we talked about that was really interesting, you know, if I didn't have the 12 years in this business that I have had, I would have had no bloody clue what to do. Her and I would probably be at each other's throats. It would have been a nightmare. So when they say do your research, doing your research isn't always about price. Sometimes you just have to understand what you're getting yourself into. And most people don't. See, a lot of, a lot of this is glamorized on YouTube. I don't glamorize anything. I tell you how it is. That's also why I had a list of clients for years that always came back and bought multiple times and, you know, sent referrals my way was because I just don't care. I care, but I don't care. Meaning, I care about you, the customer, but I don't care what the manufacturer thinks. 
I even work on the manufacturer side. And it's very interesting that my pitch and my presentation to salespeople about the travel trailer that I sell to dealers, help train dealers to sell, my pitch is the same thing it was when I was a salesperson, except for I've got a few more bullets in my gun than I did, let's say, 10 years ago. And the reason why is because I have a better understanding of how things built and why they're built. Which, by the way, I really want to give a big shout out here on the podcast uh, to my boss, actually. His name is Red. Well, we call him Red. I'm not going to give you his real name. But Red is one of those guys, he hasn't been in the business that long, but he understands evolution He understands the process of moving forward. And the other thing he understands is he understands they're all wobbly boxes. And that there's just only so much you can do with a small space and so much you can do with insulation with a two-inch thick sidewall. And and, and the other thing that I really want to give him a shout-out out, and this is something that is so rare in this business... I haven't told him this yet. Eventually I will when him and I have more time. But he has the foresight. He might be a little ahead of his time with certain things. But he has the foresight of of a brand that needs to evolve. So the brand I got involved with is under the Coachman umbrella. Okay, And we've completely changed everything like lighter cabinetry uh you know different floor plans you know trying to hit a weight sector and a price sector that is going to not only be good for the customer but it's good for the camping the weekend warrior the guy that goes out for a couple days a family goes out for the weekend or three or four days at a time the folks that have an SUV, the folks that are on a budget that aren't going into negative three degree temperatures like my dumb butt is. And he just, he had the foresight that this is a product that needs to get back to its roots, but also evolve. So I want to give a big shout out. And Red, if you're listening to this, you know, it's a big shout out to you, man. I mean, between you and, and the rest of the gang, uh, you know, I, I, I believe that the brand of trailer I represent will probably be one of the top three or four selling travel trailers in 2023 and 2024. So just, just want to throw that out there. Um, you know, we're, we're coming into a difficult time right now and, and there's just so much confusion and I, I, I talked about this in my last show uh, about fake YouTubers with fake news. Another shout out I really want to give out is to Josh the RV Nerd at Bish's RV. Did a great video the other day. Um, but, you know, Josh can only go so far. Uh, he's limited because he is part of a corporation now. I'm not as overly concerned as I was, you know, when I was working for, let's say, some of the big boys I've worked for. But let me go over something with you guys that, that this is actually sent to me by my boss. It's called, it's by rvnews.com. It says wholesale RV values drop. Now I did, if you want a shorter version of this video or a little more detail of this, if you go to my YouTube channel, not the one you're watching now if you're watching it on YouTube, but the one that is HB, that's H is in Henry, B is in Bravo, R is in Randy, V is in Victor, Lifestyle. You'll see a picture of my class, my old classy motorhome. I actually have a video on this that's a little, little more detailed, a little more scenario driven. So, it, you know, if you want a little more detail that I may give here, that's a great video to check out. Black Book's latest report found prices dropping as the winter season arrived nationwide. The December Black Book RV market commentary 
said the steep drop in wholesale prices from a month earlier continued a recent trend. The drop-off in motorhome values from a month before looks quite dramatic. Specialty, uh, But when you consider the overall trend line for the past several months, it is consistent with patterns that we have been seeing since late spring. For example, it is down 10% from August and 16% from June. Motorhome prices fell 16.2% from October, or roughly between twelve dollars and $62,000. The price is down 24% from the registered amount in November 2021. On the tollable side, the average selling price in November fell 4.8%, or roughly about $1,000 from the previous month, the price is down 9.5% since November 2021. Okay, so let me unpack this for you a little bit. First of all, and, and I know I'm going to get attacked for this, but used RV values, used, pre-owned, previously loved RV values were artificially inflated for two and a half years. Okay, it is a fact of life. I don't care what guy out there, what YouTuber, what silly clickbait moron will tell you. But the reality is, is that it was all artificially inflated. And, and a lot of that has to do with the side of the business I'm on now. Now, during COVID, during the lockdowns for two and a half years, I worked for three different dealerships. Okay. I pretty much went wherever there was product. Manufacturers, which I, I've been friends with most of the manufacturer reps for, God, over a decade. Uh, my buddy Ryan... Archie, Dave, uh, God, Casey, uh, Eddie, Shauna, all, all these folks. I've known them for years, and they could not get enough product out to the dealerships. I remember sitting at Beaumont RV with 18 units on the ground. That's it. A dealership that usually carries roughly 100 in stock at any one time had 18 on the ground. And it was just, it would just rotate. I don't think we had more than 40 or 45 at a time for the whole time. And we just sell them. Something come in, it leave right away. Something came in, it leave right away. Uh, my partner Doug and I were like, holy cow, man, we're just, you know, if we could get... Just another 20 at a time, we would triple our business. Because there was just such a big demand. The lockdowns created a huge, large demand. Huge. It was ridiculous. And the manufacturers could not keep up. Part shortages. But then after that, when we finally got through a little bit of that, all of a sudden now... Let's peek our head around to price increases. The price of wood, the price of aluminum, the price of glue skyrocketed. The price of transportation skyrocketed. There was a point in time, and, and this is a true story. We usually got these little tiny little 16 to 18 foot travel trailers. They get triple hauled out means they put three on a, a load boy truck and they ship them out to dealerships. <clears throat> well, I remember in 2019, it would cost me $600 to $1,000 per trailer per truck. You basically paid for the truck. It was between three and four grand for the truck to drive out from Indiana with the three trailers on board. And then about 2020, it went up to five grand, and you're like, oh, you know what? I could deal with that. That's like 350 bucks a trailer. It's not a big deal. Now, it's ten thousand dollars. It was ten grand. It was 
double what it was in 2020 up until about two months ago. So it just goes to show you that the increase in prices that the manufacturers took that they passed on to the dealerships artificially created an increase in value of someone's used RV. Okay. So there were guys that were bought brand new travel trailers, very popular floor plans with slide outs and nice and bells and whistles that buy for like 25 grand in 2017 they came and traded them in in 2020 and 21, and we're getting 30 to 33 grand on trade. Now, what in someone's right bloody mind would uh, would think, really would think, that something that you have to register with the DMV or the Department of Motor Vehicles, wherever you may live, whatever my state you may live, gains value. When does that ever happen? It doesn't. Now, antique cars, different story. But if you go buy a Lamborghini, that's a 1988 Lamborghini. If you take adjustments for inflation, you still lost money when you sell it. It goes down in value. So this artificial increase in price, of course it was going to come down. Of course it was going to decline. It's not a decline, it's called a correction. You are correcting what the problem was. And the problem was, if someone wants an entry-level used travel trailer for around 12 or 15 grand... They used to be able to buy one for five, there was five or six years old for that. Oh, by the way, now because of COVID, now because of lockdowns, guess what, folks? You're going to love this. 